these kids have and to give these kids a little special recognition and send off um, as the eighth graders that have put in a lot of time and effort for our school. Um, do you guys know about how many hours we've spent together the last four years? They know a lot, and they're like, you tell me. That, that's what they'll, just give us the answer, Mr. Pokemon. <laughs> right? If we play dumb and ask, it's long enough, they'll just tell us the answer. Over 5,000 hours. For some of you, it probably feels like it's been more than that. Maybe, I don't know. Um, but I ask myself, how did I do that? I mean, yeah, I do sometimes. By God's grace, I did that, thank the Lord. Uh, no, you guys are great to be with, I really mean it. Um, but 5,000 hours, that's a lot of time. Um, and during that time, I'm sure I've tried to give them countless lessons and countless lectures, many of which were not heard to begin with, and if they were heard, they were forgotten by now. Um, but hopefully, in a moment like this, in a setting like this, maybe a message sinks in a little bit more, so that's why I take the opportunity to do it. Um, because it's a message that I think it's really important for you to know as students from, from St. James and uh, as young men and women that are going to go out and live in a world that is not always going to be supportive of the faith that you are trying to build in your lives right now. And athletics is an interesting thing where it gives you that opportunity to bring out the best in people, uh, the best lessons, um, and many of those lessons are spiritual in nature. Um, but it also can be taxing and difficult. Um, or it can oftentimes, especially in kids' lives, put a spotlight on lessons that we don't necessarily want them to hear and live by. And have them put too much energy or recognition into things that don't really matter. And so we want to make sure that you know it matters. Uh, and the joy of winning and butcher beaters and uh, the joy that athletics can give you is such a temporary thing. And I just always want to make sure our students know not to invest so much in temporary things when there are eternal things that matter so much more. You know, so if we look back four years, many of which were interrupted by uh, this pandemic for you guys, but you have a lot of opportunities here. If we gave you great memories, trophies, wins, certificates, whatever. That's only a little bit of what we really care about doing. Um, we want to prepare you for something a whole lot more meaningful. And so I feel like the best way to share that message with you guys is a poem. You have to be poetic. Because you're so talented. You know, the reality is you guys have talents that you don't even know exist right now. It's crazy to think. Luke was talking about it, the transition from C to A team. I oftentimes, I get to watch this stuff on a yearly basis with different kids, but I will marvel at what A teams can do when I remember what they were like as fifth graders. And I've said this to a handful of you before, but it's encouraging to me to think, geez, I don't think I'm going to get better at anything in my life that much anymore. In just two or three years, when they started out to where they got to, I wish I could improve in something like they did. You know, it's encouraging to watch, and there's talents that you guys have that you don't even know about. Um, and that's what's kind of inspiring for me to know as our students leave St. James as eighth graders, what is God gonna do with those talents that they have, that they've started to develop, and that they don't even know they have and will develop in the future? It's pretty amazing to me. So I try to share some of those thoughts uh, with you all in something that rhymes because it's just a fun way to, to share. So I did my best. This year I actually will say you guys were an easy group to write for and to write about. Yes, it went very well. So thank you for that. You gave me so many things to think about and write about. So without further ado, I will get poetic on you guys here. So here's a group, a remarkable class, though they do have their challenges and fair share of sass. 
that will be the truest thing I say tonight. <laughs> Along with that sass came a lot of good times. It brings a smile to my face as I'm writing these rhymes. You've survived school at home, and you've missed out on some things, but you've taken it in stride for the King of Kings. These past years have been interesting, that is for sure, but you just trust in your Savior as he's the, as he's the cure. For we know that he tells us when we are weak, he is strong. He never promises a life where nothing goes wrong. So continue to serve him in the good times and the bad. You can always trust the true words of your heavenly dad. Trust his promise to love you and to see you through any trial. The true Christian life of faith will never go out of style. Well, now I should tell you a little bit about each of these guys. Now at your table, it's time to take bets on perhaps who cries. Let's start with the ladies. A wonderful group, there are five. Trust the Lord and his words, and then you will thrive. First we have Jenna, a girl always wearing bright smiles, a willing helper and leader who surely goes extra miles. And Natalie, a fierce competitor. Don't you get in her way. You can hear the other team saying, man, this girl can play. Then Macy, our lefty, full of strength and swift speed, willing to play tough for her, te for her team and do whatever you need. Of course, there's Lauren, always ready to make everyone laugh. Just don't give her your toy doll, it may end up cut in half. <laughs> you do your thing, there's some inside jokes in here, but it's okay, it's still down. <laughs> Finally, Emmy Marine, ready to help no matter the cause. Her heart and determination deserve your praise and applause. Now, on to the boys, a bunch of respectable guys. So many words could describe them, but I don't think one will be wise. But that is to be expected. They're just learning the ropes. Growth and maturity will come. At least that's one of my hopes. Yeah. Someday. Like I said, Alan, you don't even know you have yet. First we have Joe. He seems determined to lead. Just pull in the right direction and you're sure to succeed. And Charlie, a great friend. He's always there for his bros. With sweet Jordans like his, he's never heard, What are those? <laughs> now JJ, full of talent, his doodles and drawings are extreme. His last shot at St. James was a half-court buzzer beater supreme. <laughs> Brandon is always hustling. He works hard, gives his all. I'm thankful the foot healed after your mid-season ball. Josh and James, not just twins, but both Potterheads at heart. I hope they don't see me in grandma's clothes if they run into a Bogart. <laughs> now, you both know it's Leviosa, not Leviosa. So just swish and flick. You're both solid young men, certainly growing up quick. These kids, they are ready. Their time at St. James almost done. Thanks for the memories, the laughs, and for all the fun. Walk with your savior, and you're bound to succeed. Don't worry or fret, just follow his lead. He has led you this far while always guiding your way. He is holding your hand each and every new day. Lean not on your own ways or what you can do, but trust in the Lord as he will see you all through. He will straighten your path and pick you up when you fall. If you need another hand, well then just give me a call. Remember your teammates, the lessons, and all your friends. Nothing can take those away as your time as a Seder, it ends. It has been such a blessing to be a part of this clan. Continue to be faithful and trust in God's plan. For now, I will say goodbye, but it's just the middle of your story. Live your life in a way that it ends. To God, all praise and glory. Give it up for our eighth graders!